things have changed and things are changing and they continue to change. Um, we had hoped that by uh, when we we're looking back last May and in April, we were hoping when we we're doing the fall schedule that uh, we would be back somewhat to a, a normal situation. And obviously we're not. And uh, uh, so we're, we're, we've, we've made some plans already from an instructional standpoint uh, that we would go from the face-to-face -face classes to the um, hybrid type class. And that way we would at least be able to have some face-to-face -face type of opportunity to meet with students. Well, I think uh, we've made some decisions now to go from the hybrid to a different type of uh, structured uh, remote format, which I wanna talk about in a few minutes. But again, I think there's just changes that are taking place constantly, and uh, we're, we just need to, to do whatever we can here in this, the, the decisions that we make uh, to make sure that we maintain the safety and the health and the wellness of our students and our faculty and our staff. So that's obviously very important. Um, and I'll, again, we really can't wait much longer. We waited as, about as long as we could wait uh, in terms of making decisions for the fall semester. Um, you know, we're August the 24th is going to be here before you know it, which is the beginning of the fall semester, and we need to start making plans for that and instructional plans and other types of plans. So that's, uh, that's another reason why we're meeting today and we've, we've talked um, the last couple of weeks, actually, the last two or three weeks about what our alternative plans uh, could be for the fall semester if things didn't get better uh, regarding COVID-19. And and at least in East Texas, at least, it hasn't gotten better. Um, I, I think maybe in, in some other parts of the states it may be, but here it's not. And so we're going we're gonna to go forward and make decisions. And so I, hopefully you'll, we'll be able to talk about those today. Um, we are continually getting advice from CDC, and we're continually getting advice from the, the county and the regional uh, health officials and other officials, county officials, county judges and others in the other in the area as well as the governor uh, uh, who pretty what pretty much provides um, uh, rules and regulations oftentimes as to what we can do and what we can um, i'd also like to mention dr reed helen reed she's really been instrumental over the last since march i guess since last five months uh, in terms of helping us make decisions and and helping us do things to make sure that we are doing everything we possibly can to prevent um, to any to prevent any uh, to make sure we have safe uh, issues and and we have safety and prevent any actions that uh, where people may not be feel comfortable and safe so I appreciate her and I'll continue to depend on her to be able to help us make some of those decisions as we go forward um, th there is a website out there as well I, we posted some things on our TVCC website I think maybe Monday, and there's some other things posted out there. Uh, I sent out uh, an email. Oh, by the way, I, I did realize later on that we're not in January. We are in, in July, and I appreciate, I think Mike Peak uh, mentioning that to me pretty quickly. So um, we, I did send out an email yesterday, and it's got a CDC um, and a coordinating board uh, protocol uh, location. And of course, we're using that in terms of what we're doing here at the college. So. If you're interested in going to that uh, website, you can go there and you can do um, do whatever uh, you find out whatever information that you may need to may be interested in finding out about. Our major priorities have been since the March and continue to be to maintain a safe environment here for our students and our faculty and staff. And our, our decisions are made for that where that is a major priority and a focus. But we also continue to want to do everything we possibly can do to um, have the quality and the affordable education for our students and opportunity for our students. So again, what decisions that we're making today, we're making uh, it, with that in mind, trying to do whatever we can to have uh, a quality, uh, affordable uh, opportunities for our students to learn. Um, I've been asked several times whether I think the enrollment's going to increase or decrease for the fall semester. And of course that changes on a regular basis as well. But I was told this morning, uh, uh, Tanya mentioned to me this morning that financial aid applications are, are up about 50% uh, from this time last year. 
So uh, I don't know what the enrollment's going to be like uh, in the fall semester. Um, I, my prediction is it was probably going to be down some because of the the uh, the uh, uh, concern that students may have, especially regarding workforce classes or vocational type classes where they are face to face in nature. So I, I just don't know. I think overall uh, our enrollment for the year will be up because as mo those of you who've been around for a while know, uh, anytime we have a high unemployment rate, we have a, a increase in enrollment. Uh, back in 2009, 2010, 2011, our enrollment increased by 30% in a matter of two years. And so I don't, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but our enrollment, uh, unemployment rate in our area now is, is above 10%. And, and that unemployment rate uh, obviously impacts those students that are graduating from high school. They can't go out and get a job. Uh, others have possibly been laid off. And this is a good, great op opportunity and alternative for them to be able to take advantage of an education. And the fact that Tanya told me this morning that the, the uh, applications for Pell Grant are up uh, has also um, an indication that people are, are interested in, in doing this as an alternative possibly to going to work. Um, let me just talk for a minute about uh, the plans for the fall semester. Uh, some of you already have seen this and, and read about this. So it's from the email that I've sent out and update that I've sent out and it's been posted on the, our website. But the 2020 spring and summer graduation has been canceled. We're going to have that graduation done uh, in a remote virtual format. I think Courtney Curran is in her um, uh, graduation committee are working now to be able to do some things to make it uh, seem like a realistic type of graduation ceremony where we'll call out names and, and we'll do uh, other things that we would normally do. Uh, and it will be posted on our, our website and it will be out there for our students to be able to see. It won't be the same, of course, but it will be our next best alternative that we have at this time. Uh, so it's been, it's been uh, um, changed. The, uh, the in-service activities that we have normally scheduled for the fall semester, the week prior to the fall semester is, uh, is going to be done virtually. Uh, the, the, uh, the meetings that we normally have where we get together as in the different departments or uh, uh, maybe uh, in, at different campuses will, will be done virtually. We believe that's the safest uh, format. That could change. I mean, between now and, and August the 17th, uh, it could be a, maybe a different scenario. But as of right now, we're planning on having those uh, virtually. And as opposed to having all 175 or 200 uh, in the auditorium that we normally do on Thursday uh, of that week, it, that, that will not happen. We will have some sort of virtual uh, opportunity to talk as we are today. So uh, that's, that's something I want you to be aware of. I think you're probably already aware of the changes that we're making in the instructional area. I want to talk about those for, uh, kind of talk about those for a few minutes. Um, we will continue to have the online classes as we had scheduled initially back in, uh, I guess, March of, of uh, previously in terms of what classes we wanted to have online. Those online classes will be as they always have been and will continue to be that way. There's a, uh, we'll continue using Canvas and we'll continue doing the things you can do proctored or you can do uh, the, the testing or exams can be done uh, in, in the uh, uh, class itself. So there, that's not changing any. We'll continue doing the online classes as we always have. Um, the, the thing that is changing is, as I mentioned earlier, we went from a face-to-face -face environment to a hybrid environment, and now we're going to what we're calling a remote scheduled environment. And, and what that means is, is that those classes that were face-to-face -face and those classes that were hybrid, we're going to have a scheduled meetings with our students each week. Uh, it could be similar to the schedule that's on the posted on the fall schedule. It could be different than that. But we believe it's important for those students to understand that there will be meetings with their faculty. Their faculty will be available for them uh, during the week uh, for, throughout the semester uh, to discuss, lecture, provide opportunity for discussion, learning, opportunities, all that will be available. 
it'll just be done either Zoom or it will be done in some other alternative. And so hypothetically, if you had a class at eight o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, then, then, then it's possible that you may also meet that class uh, in your Zoom format or some other format in this um, remote scheduled uh, format as um, meet that class uh, in a Zoom format at eight o'clock on Monday and Wednesday. Or it could be a different time frame that, that could be worked out. But we want those, those uh, faculty to meet with those students. We feel like that's important. We've talked about this quite a bit over the last few months. And we have a lot of students out there that online is great, but they need structure. And so we believe that this is, if they can't show up for a face-to-face -face class, which is, is what we're saying that we do not want to do because of COVID-19, then the next best alternative is to have some structure to where they're meeting with the faculty member and to where they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, there's, there's, um, there's uh, some structure in terms of what's happening in the class and uh, somewhat similar to a face-to-face -face environment. So that's the, that's the next alternative that we're, we, we're changing to. And so we have about five weeks left before, for us to make that happen. I know that you'll be talking with your division chairs, you'll be talking with AVPs, you'll be talking to provost, you'll be talking with Dr. Collier, you'll be looking at all the different other alternatives that, that, that we may be able to use to make that happen. Uh, we, we still believe that, again, that there's a large number of students that we have out there that need that. And so we're doing the best that we think that we can to make that happen. Then, of course, we're still going to have some face-to-face -face class. Um, the, the, some of the workforce classes uh, will not work uh, in a remote environment. Uh, and so we're going to have to meet those classes face-to-face. -face. In doing so, they will be um, meeting CDC requirements. They will be meeting all the, the protocols that are required. They're doing it now in, in, in cosmetology and welding and, and automotive, uh, or they were in automotive, not just six weeks, but they're currently doing that. So they'll continue doing what they've been doing. Uh, they're, they're doing the screening of the students and they're very careful in terms of what they're uh, doing in their in their face-to-face -face classes. And so that will continue on in those classes that are required to do that. Um, there are some other academic classes where there, you know, there's that possibility. Again, you can talk with your division chair, AVP, or, or provost, and, and that decision can be made. Um, I know there's some music classes that we, we that you really need some sort of face-to-face -face, uh, meeting and and that can be done as long as we're meeting CDC protocols. The drama department, I think they mentioned, I, it was mentioned to me earlier that they have a, uh, they may even want to do a virtual play in the, in the fall. That'd be great. And so, you know, that's fine as long as they're meeting their class and meeting the CDC protocols. The, uh, their athletic, uh, classes, the kinesiology classes, that's possible to be able to be done in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, and there may be others out there that I'm not even thinking about. Art could be another one. Uh, I know we've had a couple of biology faculty uh, on the Athens campus that would prefer to do their uh, labs on face-to-face. Uh, -face. And that's okay, as long as we can make that work and make it work and, 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 and meet the safety requirements. Uh, we just need to do that on an individual basis, and that needs to be worked out with the division chair, AVP, or provost, and approved and discussed. And, and again, that's why we have the five weeks between now and the beginning of the, of the fall semester to be able to work these sort of things out. It will be up to each department. If you, if, if you decide that you want to have a face-to-face -face class, welding, automotive, whatever, music, uh, drama, uh, and drafting is another one. I think Donnie's a good example of that. He, he needs some face-to-face -face because his students uh, uh, do not have the ability to do the CAD-type program, the CAD-type work and other type work from home. And so that's, that's another good example. But that each one of the faculty that are in those departments and are teaching those classes will be responsible to make sure that those students are either wearing masks if that's required because they're within six foot distance, checking uh, or, or they're, they're gonna be making sure that we're meeting the CDC requirements. So that's, that's gonna be uh, putting a little bit of extra pressure, I guess you could say, on each one of those faculty members and each one of those departments 
that do decide to have face-to-face -face and need to have face-to-face -to, -face to ensure the safety of our students. So, uh, you know, that's just something that, again, can be worked out and will be worked out with our, uh, with our division chairs as we go through the next few weeks. Uh, the, of course, I haven't mentioned TDCJ, uh, but we are planning on having a interactive video uh, schedule as we have already uh, got on the schedule for the faculty that teach at TDCJ in the academic uh, classes uh, that will be held in the fall semester. We're, we're planning on doing interactive video. And we'll, so we'll have the, the, the second floor of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the LRC av available. For, uh, for, for that, we'll probably have those classroom, we will have those classrooms available. I think there's three classes that go on during the day, Monday through Thursday, uh, to, that, to do interactive video. And I think there may be a couple in Palestine as well. We'll work through whatever we need to work through to make that happen. So we're gonna continue doing uh, interactive video. As long as the units are open, as long as TDCJ is open, we will continue doing what we need to do there to make that happen. If TDCJ closes for whatever reason, if the coronavirus gets worse there, whatever happens, as it has over the last four or five months, then obviously we have to follow their, their guidelines. We have to follow their rules. And if they're closed, just because they're interactive, that, that if they're closed, that means that we can't get proctors in there. And if we can't get proctors in there, that means that we can't have those interactive video classes. So we'll just have to work on that. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to go through the fall semester without any problems. But if we do, we'll work through that as we need to, as we, as we did last uh, uh, fall semester. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. The TDC uh, workforce classes, the full-time faculty that work at TDCJ, I think we've got 17 full-time programs there. Again, it's a day-to-day, -day, it's a week-to-week -week, uh, situation. I know we've got some units open now and we've got some units closed now because of COVID-19. So we just need to be prepared to be able to go to work and to be able to start teaching those classes, leaving off where we left off, uh, back in the either back in the uh, in uh, March when we when we had to st uh, stop teaching those classes, or or if we started back, we just um, wherever we need to go with those classes, we just need to be flexible and do whatever we need to do. Um, I, th those were the things I wanted to mention to you about the instruction. I, I'm going to look at the chat room here and see if there's any questions that anybody has. Um, the question, Dr. King, is that um, students who are meeting on campus with instructors, uh, as you can see there from Mary Van Cleve, will waivers for students concerning COVID-19 and the risk associated, will there be anything signed from a legal perspective? That's the question. Yeah, that's a good question. And obviously we're not gonna have very many students on campus. Uh, as I've already talked about, but if we do, then they will, they will be monitored, they will be checked, the temperature will be checked, we'll meet all the protocols that need to be met. In terms of illegal, uh, we really haven't gotten into that uh, yet. I know there are some colleges that have tried to do some things and they've already been taken to court over uh, legal issues regarding waivers that are signed. Uh, that going back to the athletic programs, that was something that was uh, that's kind of up there in the, in the court system right now. So we really haven't talked about that. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, we we will be um, uh, checking, we will be monitoring, we we will be having them check off something as they walk into the building. They will be. I think they may or may not be signing something, but they very well could be. But in terms of a legal uh, type of document at this time, that's not been something that we have, have, uh, have done or have worked on, but that's not so, to say that it's not something that could be done. So I hope that hopefully that answers your question for you. Um, let me just go ahead and talk a little bit about, we'll have office hours. I wanted to mention that as well. They, uh, our office hours will be, will be, uh, uh, Zoom office hours or whatever remote format that you, our faculty would like to, to meet with our students in. But you'll have posted office hours just like you normally do, except they won't be in your office. They'll be, they'll be in a remote type of environment, a remote format, so that you could do that from, from any location. You could do it from your office if you wanted to, but there's a very good chance that the building is gonna be locked and you're gonna need to 
you know, open it up yourself and go in to the building into your office and you can do whatever you want to from there. But it was, it was, it's, we're, our, our goal here is to keep you safe and our students safe. And so uh, we would prefer that office hours and discussions with students uh, be done in a, in a safe remote environment. Um, let me just talk a little bit about student services. And if you have any other questions about instruction, I'd be happy to, to go back to that. But, um, and, and, and also please send me an email as well. It might be easier to do that. After we have our uh, meeting today, if you'd like to email me about something, uh, I'd be happy to, to, you know, go through that and answer that question. Or if there's something I can't answer right now, maybe we could, uh, we could discuss it at a later time. The student services uh, will continue being done remotely. I, I will tell you, I am so proud of how our student services department have functioned uh, on all of our campuses over the last um, five months, four months, since March. Uh, our financial aid office, our advising office, our advisors, our registration, our business office, all of our offices have done a, a really, a really tremendous job of getting the job done. Is it, is it as good as if it would have been if they'd been able to come in and meet with us in person? Probably not. But we're learning how to do things remotely and I think it's working out very well. I'm not getting very many complaints. I get complaints anyways, but I'm not getting as many complaints as I thought that I would get from parents and students because they're not able to register or they're not able to get a class or they're not able to to get financial aid or whatever the case may be, or scholarships or whatever the case may be. So I'm, I'm, I think we're doing a, a good job with that. So I, for, the, for the safety issue and the COVID-19 issue, uh, we're gonna continue doing uh, remote uh, student services as we are now. And so our buildings primarily will continue to be closed. Um, uh, it depends on what campus you're on uh, as to what, what may be open and what may not be open. Uh, on the Terrell campus, for example, um, I think cosmetology originally was meeting in person. They're not, in, they're not now. So I'm not even sure any building is open on the Terrell campus. So it's going to depend on the campus and what is needed to be open there. Uh, but they can do uh, registration, uh, again, remotely. Uh, on the Palestine campus is the same scenario. I think you've got it pretty well locked down. And it will continue to be locked down and closed and done remotely. Uh, until future notice, until things get safer, until we feel better about the, the environment that we have. Uh, Athens campus is a little bit different because we're going to have uh, students living in the dorms. Um, right now we've got, we think we may have 250 to 260 students uh, living in the dorm. We initially anticipated uh, probably around 200, 250, and now it looks like it even could be more than that. We could have some leaving. Uh, I, I don't know that that's, that's, that happened to us uh, back in, in uh, March, but we will have students on campus. So we will have some, uh, need to have some things open here on the, on the Athens campus that we would not, may have open now. For example, the cafeteria will be open. It wasn't open, to, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it uh, uh, was not open at one point in time, except for a very small number of students. But now it will be open. Uh, the uh, uh, probably the ball building will be open to some degree. We're gonna we're it's open now and it's been open uh, basically uh, all 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 along. Again, we're monitoring the students as they're coming in. We're checking them. We're doing what needs to be done. But we do have students that need access to computers, and we have students that need access to uh, other other facilities that we may have. And so we're gonna have the ball building open, uh, hopefully, we're, we're gonna talk about that again over the next two or three weeks for our students that are on campus or our students that may be off campus that need to come in and have access to computers, have access to be able to do things online or to do things remotely. So that will be done. Um, most of our other buildings, I think, again, I mentioned earlier, we may have some uh, biology faculty that wanna teach uh, classes, if that's the case, over the Gibbs building that it could be open on, on certain times for those, those students in those classes. Um, we're still working with the early college high school, uh, Athens Independent School District, trying to figure out how that's gonna work. Um, we, we, uh, they nor we 
as of right now, our plans are for them to come on campus, and that may change, but for them to come on our campus and for them to go directly to the general studies building, they will be checked and they will be uh, monitored. Uh, they will be wearing masks or whatever it is that we need to, to, to do to make sure that we're meeting the CDC protocols. And they will basically be in that building all day or all the time frame that they're going to be on this campus. Normally, as you know, they go from building to building and they're taking classes. That won't happen. We won't have classes building the building. So for safety issues, we're gonna keep them confined to that, those, uh, that building. And so they'll be there uh, during the time frame that they'll be taking classes. They will also be taking classes uh, remotely. They'll be taking classes using Zoom. And so we'll have that opportunity for them to be doing that uh, as well in that building. That may change. The things are changing rapidly and with public schools. So that may change. In, uh, had a conversation yesterday with the superintendent at Athens Independent School District. And, you know, they're changing. They're having to make some changes too. So we just don't know exactly where we, where we will be going with that. I've asked about dual credit. Um, that kind of goes along with the early college high school. We will continue uh, obviously doing is dual credit. Um, we're, we are doing more embedded uh, dual credit with, uh, with high school faculty qualified High school, high school faculty will be doing more Zoom, will be doing structured uh, remote, uh, and they'll be doing online like they always have been doing. Uh, I think the Terrell campus, normally we have our, those students from Terrell High School are bused out to the Terrell campus. That's not gonna happen. Uh, they're gonna stay on the Terrell campus and take the classes from the Terrell campus. I'm sorry, from Terrell High School. They're gonna stay in Terrell High School take the classes there and then they'll be uh, done structured remote or they'll be done internet or they'll be embedded faculty that will be teaching, not our faculty, but embedded faculty from Terrell High School that are qualified mm -hmm. teaching the classes. I, you know, it's just gonna be every, all of our 28 independent school districts are, are operating differently. And it's very, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be a challenge working through all the different things that we need to work through with a dual credit, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna make it work. And I know we have La Pointer that brings their students over uh, to the Athens campus. Uh, and we also have Martin's Mill that brings their students over and bus it. So we're gonna work with the superintendents and see what they wanna do, what we need to do and how we can make it work for them. We don't wanna lose enrollment. We want these students to be, uh, we, want our, we want opportunities for these students uh, to be able to take our classes and to be able to do uh, the things that they need to do to, to move forward. So that's kind of what we're doing with dual credit. We're still discussing, we're still having opportunities to meet with superintendents and, and principals and see what needs to take place. Um, in terms of the Athens, going back to the Athens campus again, so I, I see the Athens campus primarily being operating the way it is now with a few of the buildings open now, primarily to meet the needs of those students that are needing to have uh, access to computers. Uh, maybe they're living on campus or whatever the case may be, but we, we will try to accommodate those students the best that we possibly can. Uh, we'll, pro we'll have the student union building, at least the first floor of the student union building on the Athens campus open. It will be, uh, we have the Starbucks, it will be open. Uh, I know that's important to some of you uh, and, and myself as well. Uh, we also will have the, the, the cafeteria open there for students to be able to go over and have some alternative um, type uh, for, for, our, uh, for their meals. Uh, we'll have the, the, uh, the fitness center open. It will be monitored just like everything else will be monitored. I mentioned the cafeteria will be open and, and I'll mention this, we've, we've been working directly with um, Airmark and they're very strict over there in terms of, of uh, making sure that everything is done according to the CDC requirements. So um, we, feel, we feel comfortable with that and what's happening over there. And, and right now it's a lot of it's takeout. They're not, they're not having them even sit down there in the cafeteria. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a, 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 a situation to where we're, 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 we're accommodating the students that are on campus and maybe even the faculty that are on campus in terms of meals, but it's gonna be a little bit different. The bookstore will be closed. It will remain to be closed. It has been closed since, uh, I guess, um, since um, March. 
And uh, I think it's working out very well. I mean, until somebody tells me that it's not working out, then that we, we may change that. But right now, they're getting their books uh, okay. And uh, I think Beth Ann is working with students to be able to, to, to deliver them to them and get them in some other way that needs to be done. So I think that's working out. I would prefer that people not just be able to walk into the bookstore. I don't, I don't think that's a good, healthy uh, situation. So I think to, to protect them and protect the bookstore employees, I think it's best to leave it closed now and be able to do what we've been doing, what, what we did for summer one and summer two, and, and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then we'll find, uh, we'll look at that again. Uh, you probably already know about athletics. Uh, athletics has basically all been postponed until the spring semester. Uh, we do have limited practices in the fall and we have limited scr scrimmages in the fall, but basically all of the activities, uh, the, base, the, football, the uh, so football games, the uh, softball games, volleyball games, basketball games, season has all been moved to the spring semester. And, Hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll uh, look at our, our situation in November and probably reevaluate where we are for the spring semester. But hopefully that part of it will work out for us. Uh, it's gonna be different. That we're, um, I'm, I think I mentioned earlier, if I didn't, I needed to, the, the uh, uh, faculty retreat that we normally have in the fall semester will either be postponed to the spring semester or it will be done uh, virtually. The um, uh, learning day that we normally have in the fall semester will either be done um, uh, remotely or probably be uh, moved to the spring semester. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, asking people, I'm asking our faculty, staff, others, uh, really to do, uh, to be very careful in the fall semester and us not have those activities where we're getting large groups of people together. I just don't think that's gonna be uh, in our best interest, uh, especially early on in the fall semester. Uh, I was asked earlier in the week about the FFA contest. We've had FFA contests here on this uh, college as long as I've been here. I don't think it's a good environment for us to have 200, 250 high school uh, students walking around campus at, right now. And that could change between now and, and, and November but I don't think right now, I think I don't, we just can't tell them that that's a safe for them to do that. And so those are sort of things that I hate for us to not to be able to do. But at this time, I just don't see that it's in our best interest or safety to be able to move forward with that. Other, other things I've had people calling me about, other things that they would like to do, and basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm just simply saying right now, it's just not a safe environment for us to be able to, uh, to do that. Jerry, yes. there's a couple of questions. Um, Mark Housen had a question and I think I answered it. And then Vicki Geisel's got one, if you'll look there. Okay. All right, let me look at uh, Mark's question here. We'll be, uh, we'll about, what about requiring students in face-to-face? -face? We're not requiring students face-to-face um, -to, -face to take proctored exams and laboratory practicals. Uh, we're not we're not requiring students. Um, if you as a faculty member want to do proctored exams, we're doing those now. And we have been doing them since March. And our testing center or uh, testing centers uh, have been uh, uh, screening those students as they walk into the entrance to the building. So I think that's worked pretty well. If you're a faculty member that you want to give a proctored test, I think that's a that's okay to do. I haven't talked to our testing people in the last few weeks, so that may be something else that we need to discuss. But uh, that's, that's up to you as a faculty member to make that decision. I know more and more faculty are going to non-proctored than, than have before, but that's okay. That's whatever you want to do. In terms of laboratory practicals, is, is, it, is this something that would, should be practical or safe to do, or should instructors have students in face-to-face -face classes to take their exams and laboratory practicals online in Canvas and using Respondent. Yes, we're, we, uh, we basically have purchased the software program to be able for our students to be able to take their exams. If they don't want to come to the testing center, and we prefer that they don't, unless they don't have any other alternative, then we would prefer to take their, uh, their proctored test 
uh, at home using Respondus lockdown browsers. And so, yeah, we're going to continue doing that just like we've been doing all summer and basically just like we did in the spring semester. And, and we did purchase a software program to be able to do that uh, uh, and do it maybe even to be able to do, do more. I know we've had a problem this summer uh, because I think the, the company that we were working with was back, got backed up because of all the, the whole country was trying to do that, I think. And so hopefully they've worked out those bugs. And uh, so we, we, could, we could do more exams from home uh, using that company to uh, be able to uh, work through that. And I, I know Holly Collier's done a good job of, of helping us uh, make sure that we can do that. Um, and then Vicki Castle has one. Will it go back to the old operational hours? I probably assume that it will. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we're going to just, we'll be talking about that as we go along. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly. We haven't really discussed a lot about that, but I, we, we will. And also, obviously, we want it to be open when it needs to be. And so we'll work through that. I, I think it was open at like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. before. You know, we just need to see where we need to be open. And then it was open till like 8 o'clock at night. So we'll work through that, Vicki, and see what we need to do to make it uh, accessible to as many people as we possibly can. Um, anybody have any other questions? I'm looking through. Uh, yeah, we'll send out something letting you know about that. Diane is, is Diane, thank you for helping us here. It says, yes, we have been proctoring tests for our classes since March. We just asked that instructors have their students call for an appointment and a couple of days in advance so that we can make sure we're able to adhere to CDC guidelines as far as spacing goes. We require masks and detect the temp and we do that before, I've, I've seen them standing out in the, out in the uh, uh, entrance way uh, before they come into the building. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue doing that unless, unless that, uh, that doesn't work out for whatever reason. But again, we'd love for them to use uh, respondents. And it, was it Examity? I think that was the name of the company that we were using before to give tests for us. And we'll probably continue uh, using Examity, although I know we did have some issues with that. Will the testing in the library uh, be available? It has not been. Uh, we'll, we'll make some determination, uh, Lisa, as to whether we need to do that or not. I know there's some evening opportunities uh, in the library that were available before. But I think when we closed down in March, we did not do that. I have to go back and look and see. We did not leave the library open. So we'll work through that. If we need to have uh, hours that we can be available uh, for testing, uh, then we'll, we'll work through what we need to. But, and I think it's different on each campus um, in terms of, of how that works. But we'll work through that and, and make some decisions on, on, on the hours that we need to be open for testing especially proctored testing. Okay. Um, again, if, if you have a question, yes, uh, full-time will get loads first. Uh, we're working right now. I didn't see the question. Uh, there are some issues with adjuncts teaching sections with full-time are still trying to make a load. Is there any progress on that issue? Yes, there is. And we're, we're I think the instructional leadership is meeting, has been meeting. They're meeting on Monday. They have a big meeting on Monday to make sure that, um, make sure that we're, we have a, a faculty has the loads and, and overloads that are, are usually are normal. And then whatever is out there available for uh, other, others that are full-time faculty will be out there. But we're, we're working through that. They're gonna work through that. I've talked to, our new vice president for instruction, Kristen Spazera. We've talked about that, as a matter of fact, yesterday. And we want to make sure that our full-time faculty are taken care of. And that will happen. I, I, again, I can't predict what's going to happen in the fall semester. Um, but, you know, we're going to do everything that we possibly can to make sure that everybody's got uh, their loads and, and potentially the overload that is, is available. It will be available to full-time faculty first. It's going to be a different year, you guys. <laughs> I was hoping that it wouldn't, but it is. And I, there's a lot of challenges still out there. I mean, anything can happen between now and the next five weeks. And uh, so just, I, and I can't express how um, uh, happy I am and pleased I am at how you guys have done what you've done 
uh, to be able to be flexible and to be able to work through whatever issues that we have have had to work through. You know, I tell people I'm I'm used to being making a year schedule a long time in advance and and sticking with the schedule and having everything all worked out and then get, getting a schedule for the next year uh, in advance. And we're usually working about two years in advance in our scheduling. Well, unfortunately, right now, we can't even work two weeks in advance, uh, oftentimes, in scheduling. And so anything can happen. You know, this thing could get worse. COVID-19 could get worse. The governor could come in and close it all down again, like he did in, in uh, March. And, you know, if he does, then we have to adjust and we have to be flexible and do what we, uh, what we say. We believe that we're in a, in, a, in a prime position here, if that happens, to be able to continue on. Uh, except for in some of those workforce type classes, which we weren't able to continue on in March, but we made it work. We brought them back in the summer and we, we, we were flexible and we made that work to where those students were able to finish those classes. So there's going to have to be some flexibility here. I'm afraid uh, it's going to be a different fall semester. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, do I like it? No, I don't like it. I, I want it to be like it was, but it may never be that way again. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope hope that it, it gets close, but I, I, th these types of um, uh, I, I, I don't think it's the best situation for our students. But it I, in terms of, of what it could be, in terms of what it was, but it's it's the best for what we have available for what we can do at this time. A lot of colleges have completely gone to total online. They're not doing any kind of structured schedule type of format. I just don't think I think that's not our in our best interest of our students to do that. And so I, I believe that we're, uh, we're, we're, we're ready to go with the best alternatives that can be out there for whatever may happen for the fall semester um, to go for our students. I know I've heard, I've read Tyler Junior College. I think I read the other day, they're going pretty much all online. And so, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's doing things different. It's Dallas Community College, they made the decision a, a month ago to go all online, except for maybe some of their workforce classes. So it's, everybody's different. Everybody's got issues that are, uh, you know, that, that are different around the state, but we're doing what we feel like is in the best interest of TBCC, our students, our faculty, our staff, and our communities that we serve. Um, okay, let's see, do we have any other questions? There or are Jerry? some over there, Jerry. What's that? There is one from Vicki Geisel and one from Pat Richardson. Are we similar in operation to our sister colleges? <coughs> I think we are, Vicki. I, I don't know. I know Tyler opened up. Uh, Tyler Junior College opened up everything open. back a couple of months ago, and it, I, I couldn't believe it uh, when they did that. And so I don't know exactly what other colleges are doing. I have a meeting every week, once twice a week, with all the presidents and all the community colleges in Texas. And we're trying to work together to try to come up with, you know, some, some good plans, but every college is different. And uh, even, in, even in our case, every campus is different. Back in March, we had to make some decisions about what was going on in Terrell because the county judge in Terrell was telling us we had to do certain things on, in, in Kaufman County and that wasn't happening in Henderson County. So everything is different. Um, uh, it's, it's not the same. Everybody's trying to abide by the, the uh, coordinating board guidelines and that's something that we're all we've all agreed to but in terms of whether we're doing something similar to them I have I don't I really don't know um, I, I have not I have not I think they're all kind of like we are they're trying to make decisions uh, moving forward and they're kind of like we are they've waited as long as they could and it's it we can't wait any longer we have to make those decisions now and so I think that we're all uh, kind of doing what we be believe is in the best interest. I may be wrong, but I think Kilgore went to all, all online uh, environment already, I think. Uh, but I'm, again, I'm not real sure. Then it, it's changing with them as well. Um, for the veterans that um, had a question about for veterans that would be a detriment to them money-wise if they go all online, if a class is converted, but it was face-to-face -face originally, bets get paid different. Again, I, 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 you know, there, this could hurt 
other people. I don't know. It's in the best interest of the overall college and the best interest of our students. And, uh, you know, we just have to work through whatever the issues are. We will have some face-to-face -face classes. And if they're interested in welding or automotive technology or cosmetology or drafting or, uh, or maybe taking some other, other types of classes, they'll be available. We're not doing away with all face-to-face -face classes. But we're just uh, we're just doing away with the with the face in the classroom environment, and I know there's still some uncertainty about there about um, international students. I know that uh, they made some decisions a couple of weeks ago, and I think I read the paper yesterday or saw somewhere where that that could change. So we're trying to do uh, doing the best we can for everybody. Uh, we do have face to face students, uh, a face to face classes for international students. And if we need to make a class out there just for international students, that's something that we can do. So that we need to talk about that as an opportunity uh, for, to be able to work with them. So, you know, we just have to do the best that we can to work through whatever the issues may be. Also, the hybrid will not be charged. No, that's a good question. I've had people ask me that. If a person, si a student signed up for a face-to-face -face class initially or a hybrid class or changed to a hybrid class, they will not be charged for an online uh, uh, fee that's normally charged for the online classes. Now, obviously, if they signed up for an online class, they're going to be charged the online fee. But if they didn't sign up for it originally, just because it's not fair for them to have to pay that fee if they didn't sign up for that type of class originally. And that's basically what we did this summer. We did the same thing. Um, yeah, I think Kristen Fazir has mentioned that uh, um, that supervisors, uh, uh, division chairs, AVPs, provosts will be communicating with faculty uh, next week. Um, they're having a big meeting on Monday, I think, and next week there'll be some opportunity for, for discussion about where, what, what may be, need to be done to get ready for the fall semester in terms of instruction. So uh, again, I appreciate faculty, uh, what you've done, I tell people over and over again, I had an interview yesterday with Michael Hannigan and uh, he spent, we spent about 40 minutes talking about TVCC. And one of the things I wanted to make sure he understood and everybody in our communities understood was what you as faculty and staff and administration at TVCC have done uh, in the last five or six months, four or five months. And what you did back in March, when you converted all of your own face-to-face -face classes to some sort of remote uh, format, in fact, a matter of really two weeks is, is, is amazing. It is, it is incredible. And the work and the effort and the time that went into doing that is way above and beyond what normal, normally you would see done. But what we have here at TBCC is we have dedicated faculty, we have dedicated staff, we have dedicated, um, stu we have dedicated uh, administrators that are willing to go above and beyond and they're willing to step up. And that's exactly what you did. And again, if we have to do it again, I know that you will do that. You're, you're, you're dedicated enough to be able to, to, do, to make the, to, the changes, to have the flexibility if we need to, uh, to do what needs to be done for the best interest of our students. Our students is what this college is all about, as you well know. And whatever we do needs to be in the be their best interest to make sure they're safe, and to make sure that they get the best possible educational opportunities available. And that's what we're gonna to try to do. Okay, I'm pretty much at the end of my list here. Um, if you'd like to go to our TVCC website, uh, I think a lot of this information is already posted out there. I think that uh, Miles told me, maybe Marlo told me that they're gonna record this um, uh, Zoom meeting that we've had, and it will be out there again, so that if you have any questions about something, you can you can go back and and uh, you know we can if we have any issues about something, we can talk about that in, as as we're going forward. Um, please don't hesitate to stay in contact with me. Uh, send me an email. Uh, I, I I appreciate that when I get emails, and that we can solve somebody's problem or help somebody solve a problem. Um, if you if you want to text me, I think everybody in the world has got my uh, my uh, cell phone number. I'm going to give it to you. It's 903-477-1392. I think everybody's got it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so you can text me. Uh, 
I, I usually pay more attention to text because I get the, the, the bell that rings and it tells me that something, somebody that I know probably is, is trying to get in touch with me. So you can text me if it's critical, if it's something I need to know about quickly. The superintendent of schools last night texted me about eight o'clock last night. And, uh, and we resolved some major issues that they're having with Athens uh, last night. So I probably wouldn't have answered her email necessarily or checked her email, but the text I got and we, we had a long conversation about things that we needed to do to help them. So text me if you need to, email me. Uh, I normally check my emails at the end of the day uh, here at TVCC, then again in the evening. So I try to respond to everything that needs to be responded to uh, quickly. And if I don't, that probably means that somewhere along the line, I lost it or it got lost or something. So if I'm not responding to your email, probably within 24 hours, email me again, because that probably means that something got lost or something uh, out there. So. I'll also mention while we're all together, I know this is something a little bit different, but as you know, Dr. Kinzer is leaving as, uh, uh, as of August the 1st. I'll be taking over his uh, responsibilities until we hire a new vice president for student services. That position is being advertised internally and externally. And uh, we'll just kind of play that process out. The board of trustees hires the vice president uh, and so th there will be probably three board members. Ray, I see you in the Zoom here. I appreciate you at the meeting today. Good, good. There, there'll, be, there'll be some board, board members that will be involved in that process uh, of hiring the <coughs> vice president for student services. Uh, the, VP, the VPs will be involved in that process. Of course, I will be. I have no idea how long it will take. It could take two months, three months, uh, it could be, you know, it could even be the spring semester before something is done. We need to make sure we hire the right person for the position and a person that fits into our college. Our, our college is different than a lot of community colleges. We have five campuses that we deal with and we have, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, student activities and, and student services that we do here. We have major athletic programs. We have cardets, we have drama, we have a lot of things that we do that they don't do at other community colleges. So all that will be taken into consideration when we uh, are looking at those applicants. So um, again, I'm looking, I don't see anything. Norma, is there anything else I need to answer? I don't think so. There was okay. a couple of things put out there, but they were already answered. Okay. Thank you, Norma, for helping me out here. Uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me for something else. Hopefully, as we go through the next uh, three, four, five weeks, um, you know, we'll be uh, a little bit closer to to uh, to be able to get back to a normal type of environment for the spring semester. I know we start working on the spring semester in mid October, early October. So hopefully, that will be something that we can move forward with. Um, when does the VP Student Services position close? There is no close. It's open until filled. And so um, we'll, we'll be working on that as we go along. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go. Uh, I appreciate your time here with me today. And uh, we're probably going to have another one of these meetings in a couple of weeks as we get closer to the, to the in-service activities and get closer to the beginning of the fall semester. Um, and we'll probably meet again just to talk and discuss and be able to go through whatever we need to go through at that time. So. Thank you for all that you do for TVCC. Thank you for all you do for our students. Uh, the, the, uh, the dedication that you have is something that I will <laughs> never forget and will always be remembered by what you've done over the last five months, four months, and what you continue doing for us and for our students. Thank you very much. I'm gonna, gonna call it a, uh, a meeting here. Uh, Dr. Jerry? Yes. Dr. Jerry? Yes. Are you still there? Yes, we're still here. Okay, I'd just like to say this was a very, very good update, and I'd like to congratulate you and and uh, thank you and all the people at TVCC for the great job that they've done through this last five, six months. Uh, thank them for the extra effort that they've had to put out to, to make this work. And just pray that uh, this will someday come to an end and everything will get back to normal and, and uh, but, I just we want to pray that all of our people at TVCC will 
uh, we can uh, we can perform in a way to protect their safe and good health. Thank so you, Ray. I'm proud. To be, I'm proud to be here today, and thank everyone, and hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, and I will also say the board of trustees has been behind us as well. I mean, they've let, let they've let us be flexible, and I appreciate that as well. Thank you.